Holy Spirit, be the great teacher. Open the eyes of understanding, bring to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. May we stay open and teachable. All God's people said, Amen. Oh, out here. Okay. Well, we can shut the fan off. No, too. Probably can do that. We'll try to. All right. Again, uh, I, one thing I want to share about uh, preaching and teaching. Uh, one of the things that we've grown accustomed to in the American church that preaches the American gospel, and I'm saying that on purpose because the American gospel is, is different than the gospel that is in here. That there's some, uh, uh, anyway, we, and, and even in that statement there, you need to be challenged. A good message or a good teaching is not something that you agree with. A good message and a good teaching is something that should, should, should cause you to be challenged and meditate on what's being said. You know, the, the problem that we have as being Americans, hey Linda, I need to talk to you after it's all over. Uh, the, the, what we need to do is, you know, we, we, we gather together in groups of like-minded people. We have this denomination there, this denomination, this denomination there, and, and we're just all split up. And that's not the body of Christ. That's not the purpose of Christ. Uh, and Joy, put, put uh, Revelations chapter 12, verse 10 on the board real quick. But a good message or a good teaching isn't one that you should go, yeah, that was good, I agreed with everything. A good message or a good teaching is something that's going to go, okay, how can I apply that in my life? You know, it's like the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, a lot of people study it and teach it, about what they think is happening in the book of Revelation. Well, it's not as important as what is happening in the words of the book of Revelation at the time as is what is happening in here. Do you understand that? This is where the word has to work. This is where the word has to be understood. This is where revelation takes place. This is where your life is changed. Your life isn't changed by gathering information. Your life is changed when you chew and gnaw and meditate and, and ponder on the Word of God. And that's what it says to, in, in our heart physics teachings that we do, our undiscovered heart uh, teaching is, is uh, we teach a lot on meditation. I can thank Jim Richards for that. He, uh, what little bit I know about meditation according to Scripture uh, it comes from uh, a teaching that I've learned from Jim Richards with Impact Ministry. And, uh, but I, I just want to say that, that the Bible makes it plain and clear that we're supposed to meditate on the Word of God. We're supposed to chew it, gnaw on it, roll it over, and just, just work on it. And never just take what some person says as le that that's it. It's so much bigger, so much broader. The Word of God is sharper than two-edged sword, rightly dividing the, the, the soul and the spirit. It's, it's, it's the power of God. And um, so anyway, I just want to encourage you that. And remember, what we, our goal here is not to establish doctrine in your life. I, I, I hope that we, when you leave here, you're asking more questions about God and His Word and Jesus and the Holy Ghost than you've ever asked before. I want you to learn from the Holy Spirit. I don't want to tell you what you need to know. I want you to hear from the Holy Spirit and let that revelation come alive in your heart. Amen? Amen. Okay. Just like this, it says, uh, make sure this is the right verse. 
It says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser. We've all heard this verse before, haven't we? For the accuser of the brethren. Who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Yeah. Cast down. Uh, ju just for your little... See, this is what's fun about Bible study and, and studying words and, and getting past the American... Understand the English version of the words. Uh, the Greek word, and I, I'm, I'm going to put this to memory because this is good. I just learned, I, I learned this this week. Uh, categorio. Categorio. Does that sound like another word that you've heard? Category. That's where we get the word category from. From the Greek word categorio which is the same word for accuser. Now you're saying, well, so what? No, listen to that. See, remember when we talked on uh, the Lord God, He is one, and that word one is a hod in Hebrew. It means in our diversity, it, it, in, in the Godhead's diversity, God the Father, God the Son, God, in their diversity, there's unity. It's not, they haven't been... It's not God, it's not the Son, it's not the Holy Spirit. It hasn't been, I didn't go there, it, it's, not, it's not category. You see, the devil, the accuser, the devil, the accuser, his goal of operation is to categorize and keep separate individuals look at the body of Christ look how many different categories we have and we're not together we're not in unity I really believe the body of Christ that Christ is it doesn't matter whether you're Baptist or Methodist or Lutheran or non-denominational or Assembly of God or Pentecostal you can still be one you can still as the Bible says pursue unity Blessed are the peacemakers. It's not about us agreeing with everybody else and what our theology and doctrine is. It's about us being one because we're all part of a body of Christ. You know, it doesn't have a bunch of fingers over here and a bunch of uh, elbows over there and legs. Up. It's all one. It's a hod. You know, it's okay to think different, people. But there's one thing that keeps us in a hod, and that's love. See, when you're segmented out, you're not loving that over there. You're judging that over there. You know, we, we, we shared this years ago about the uh, paradox of Christianity, that truth is always presented in a paradox. A paradox is where there's two sets of information that seem to oppose one another, but they don't. They actually go like a, a light bulb, the old incandescent light bulb that had a positive pole and a negative pole. The light didn't come from the negative. The light didn't come from a positive. The light came from what happened in between the positive and negative. And that's where we get our life is when, when it's, it's not when everybody gets together that thinks exactly the same and, and agrees. No, it's when this person who may not think like this person, but we still get, get, get together and love is manifested. And that's what the world sees. That's our light that's shining in the world, people. Man, I tell you what, it, the, the accuser has got to church so categoried, segmented, that we're, we're, there's, no there's no light, there's no love that's being manifested in between for the world to see. That, that's why we don't claim any denomination. We, we, that's, we, work, with the, we work with whomever. And... Uh, and again, I love that this is, on Monday night, this is a teaching ministry, not a preaching ministry. We try not to preach on Monday night. You get that on Sunday morning, uh, hopefully, anyway. And uh, I love questions. I love, uh, we were sharing last week in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, and we've been referring back into Corinthians, talk about the gifts of the Spirit, and uh, you know, there was the ministries of the Lord, the gifts of the Spirit, and the activities of God. And 
the Trinity all in one section. And I didn't ask their permission, but I'm sure it's okay. But, but someone brought up a question about the difference uh, about judging ministries or judging activities or aren't we supposed to, the question came up, aren't we supposed to judge? Well, there's a difference. And so what we're going to talk about, and, and by the way, I'm open to those. Oh, I love those questions. I love to have to explain deeper. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's my joy. <laughs> well, there, there's two things. Put the, put the three circles back on the board. And um, I, hopefully I can help you through this. Oh, that, that, that's good right there. That one's right there. All right. Re remember that we're spirit, we're soul, and we have a body. And does ever, has everybody gotten one of the book markers, the yellow book markers? Uh, the full picture of this is on the book marker. But over here in the body, this is what we, the carnal-minded person that's in the flesh, the touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. And religion always works from the outside in, going this direction. And you have the spirit, which mirrors those things, taste and see that the Lord's good, but is working from the inside out and trying to affect your heart and your, your soul. And the, the very word judgment, you can't say the word judgment without saying the word law. Judgment can't exist without some form of law. Does everybody understand that? That's what judgment is. You're judging according to a set standard of belief or law. You have to have something to judge by. That's what a judge does. When he pronounces judgment, that's because he's judged something according to a standard of law found to be what? Guilty. Okay? So the very word judgment is a law-based word. And it's based on information from the outside. From the outside. There's another word mentioned in Scripture called discernment. You ever heard of that word? Discernment. Discern There's actually the gift of one of the gifts of the Spirit is discernment. And there's three different levels of that. There's the, the discernment of spirits to be able to discern if a person has a spirit in them and, uh, and how to get it out of them in the name of Jesus. Jesus did this casting out the evil spirits or the demons out of people. Paul did this. Peter did this. Uh, we've done this. It's active today. Uh, but I want to show you something here. If your uh, judgment comes from the outside, you know, you're making a judgment on something. The word discernment is the same type of word as judgment, but you're making this judgment based on the things of the spirit, not the things of the flesh. Do you understand? There's two ways to make judgment, one from the flesh and one from the spirit. Now, we're going to read some scriptures, and we're going to put it in context, and I want everybody to understand this, because that was a great question. Um, and I, I love to explain things. And if I can't, someone else probably can. Look at 1 Corinthians. We're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And to, to, to show you, there, there's many stories in Scripture. Uh, I didn't sit back and just dwell on all of them. But the first one that came to my mind about the difference of discernment and judgment is, uh, I'm sorry, Joy, let's go, let's go there first. Go to Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Now, this is Jesus talking to the disciples. This is right after Luke 8, which is one of the, it was a phenomenal passage of Scripture. And it says, Now it came to pass, when the time had come from, for him to be received up that he was stead, uh, steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And sent messengers before his face and as they went they entered a village of the Samaritans 
uh, to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. I think that's interesting. I, I really don't understand that. But there was something about the countenance of Christ's face that he, they knew that when he was there, he wasn't really there. He was there. You ever been, in a, been someplace, but you're really someplace else? And I think that's really what was happening here. Next verse, Joy. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord... Now, first, let's get this perfectly clear. Were the disciples disciples? Say yes. That's an easy one. That's not a trick question. I know I'm known for trick questions. That's not a trick question. Were they disciples? Yes. Were they followers? Yes. You know, I mean, they were... They had... You know, did they have scriptural knowledge? Say yes. yes. And when the disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? Did they have knowledge of the Old Testament? Yes. Did they have history? Yes. Did they have scripture to back up what they had to say? Yes. Had they made a judgment? Yes. Were they willing to... Have the punishment come down from heaven because of their judgment they made on history, biblical scripture, history. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> There's a difference here. Watch this. Do what? <laughs> oh, well, they wanted to. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You don't know what manner of... They were making a judgment from the outside on a situation in a group of people and Jesus was making next verse next verse for the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives but to save them see see that is the difference. See, they, even though they were disciples, even though they were followers, even though they had scriptural knowledge, even they knew their history, they made a judgment on a situation based on the outside, and they missed it. They missed the discernment of the Spirit. They didn't discern what God was doing. This type of thing is all over Scripture. Where, where there's a discernment. See, see, in the old covenant, there was just discernment. In the new covenant, excuse me, there, excuse me, in the old covenant, there was just, just judgment. In the new covenant, there's something new called discernment. In other words, and we're going to get into that. Let me just go ahead and read this here. In, in, in chapter 2 in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Uh, go to 12. Ah, uh, we got to go to 10. Actually, no, we really need to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we really should, but we're not going to. Verse 4. <laughs> In my speech, in my preaching, were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. What kind of wisdom? Human. Human wisdom. Is there wisdom activated in this world? Yes. And there's, as there's actually two kinds of wisdom. Remember, this is teaching and not preaching. Uh, in James chapter 3, verse 17. Yes, I want you to go there. Verse 13, in James chapter 3, verse 13, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness, say meekness, meekness. of wisdom. This wisdom has meekness to it. Verse 14, but if you have bitter envy, self-seeking in your hearts, 
Do not boast or lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and envy, excuse me, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. So that would be a definition of the word meekness. Right there. That, 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 that right there is the definition of wisdom. Wow. Wisdom from above. This, this is talking about the wisdom. The word meekness well, I, I can do meekness the same way I do gentleness, is that you can't be gentle without having power. Does he understand that? Me, uh, gentleness is power under control. A brute is powerful out of control. A gentle person is someone that could be a brute. That's not. You're, you're not gentle if you don't have any power. Okay? So, and so this is wisdom. And this goes along with the scripture we just read over here about wisdom. It says, back into 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 4, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. Now, on, on the circles, where would human wisdom come from? The, 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 outside. the outside. Well, the earth, the, the five senses. It's, it's, it's the same thing when Jesus asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And he was talking to people who understood the Jewish people. He was talking to Peter who came from the Jewish mindset, and he said, well, the men that I know, the Jewish people, said, some say you're Elijah, and there's this list of people they thought he was. That's information that comes from what? That's, that's a judgment that's been made from outside information because they don't have the inside revelation. Got it? And then Jesus asked Peter, well, what do you say? And G, uh, Peter said, well, you're the Christ. And Jesus said, that didn't come from the outside. That came from the inside, the discernment. He had revelation. He discerned that Jesus was the Christ. He wasn't Elijah and so forth and so forth, like other people have. Just another example of that. Verse 4, it goes, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, our faith shouldn't be in what's established on the outside, but what's established by God on the inside. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? What kind of wisdom are they speaking? If, if Paul is speaking wisdom... What kind of wisdom is he speaking? Earthly or spiritual wisdom from above? Spiritual wisdom from above. Who's he speaking that to? The immature? No, he's speaking it to the mature. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. See that right there says that. Not the wisdom that's on the outside, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom or the word of... You gotta, anytime you say wisdom, you can put the word there. Because God's word is his, his logic and his wisdom that's wrapped up in his word. Okay, And it says this, But we speak the wisdom or the word of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom... Wait a minute. This is saying, again, we've read many of these scriptures, that there was a wisdom or a mystery, there was a word of God that was hidden. I'll just read it. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Ages is a reference to time. So before time began, God hid a portion of his word that was in the form of wisdom. Verse 8, which none of the rulers of this age knew. 
For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for those who love. Say the word love. love. You're going to find out that love is the source of God's wisdom and his word on this planet. We'll get to that here. Verse 16. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Through His what? Spirit. Say Spirit. Spirit. God has revealed that mystery in His Word to us through what? The Spirit, not the outside information. Not this information like the Pharisees had. Did the Pharisees have Scripture? Did they know Scripture? Say yes. Yes. Did they know Jewish history? Say yes. Were they anointed and set apart? Yes. Was their job there to teach? Yes. Did they have the Spirit? No. no. So the information they were sharing was Old Covenant information, and they didn't have the New Covenant revelation wisdom that had been hidden from... They didn't have the Spirit of God. And so in Luke chapter 8, that, that's why... Jesus said, if you were my disciples, you'd know the truth, and the truth would set you free. What did the Pharisees say? Huh? We've always been free. We've always been free. They, they were just, when weren't they free? I mean, they've always been in bondage. They had been deceived. They didn't have discernment of who Jesus was. They had scripture. They had position. They had power. They had purpose. They didn't have discernment. They didn't have the Spirit of God. You know, there, there's what I find, what you're going to, I'm going to go ahead and say this probably several times, but what I find amazing is people that talk against the things of the Holy Ghost, but yet they say they have discernment. Impossible. Discernment, it's impossible. <laughs> discernment is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And you'll never receive from the Holy Ghost if you don't honor the Holy Ghost. Man, I tell you what, honor. Je Jesus was the most anointed person on the planet. And when he went to his own hometown, he couldn't operate in any of his anointing. Because a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. They had no honor for who he was. They kept seeing him, what? According to the flesh. Who he had been. As long as people see you according to your past. And not to the presence of God on the inside of you. They'll never receive the presence of God that's on the inside of you. That's one of the, that's one of the sad things about marriages. We let the past problems of our relationship. Keep us from seeing what God's doing in the present relationship. And so we don't have the connection. We don't have, we're not even receiving from our own mate what God's doing in them because we're still seeing them and what they did wrong yesterday. Like but what happened to Ahad? In our diversities, we're supposed to be what? In unity. I'm glad Joy's not like me. We'd have some ugly kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, that there's unity in diversity. <laughs> y'all need to lighten up a little bit. Y'all have to all about ready to throw rocks at me or something. That's all right. I'm a big target. Verse, are we on verse 12? No, we're on verse 10. Go to verse 11. No, verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit... For the Spirit searches what? All things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit, little less, of a man? Which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. That's why you can't judge the Spirit of God by the Spirit of man. You understand that? 
You've got to have the Spirit of God to judge godly things. The Pharisees were judging Jesus by the outside information and not the inside information. James and John wanted, was judging the people that want to call fire. They were judging on the, they were judging and not discerning. Watch this. Uh, what verse are we on? For for what man? I was gonna, uh, even so, uh, even so now uh, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of, the spirit of God. Now we have received. Not the spirit of the world, that's the outside circle, remember? But the spirit whom is from Because what when you've been filled with the spirit, you now have the spirit of God on the inside of you. And the more spirit of God that you're accustomed to, the more discernment you're going to have in the time of need. The more gifts are going to flow. Watch this. Watch it. you got to see this. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been what? Freely given to us by God. You know, there's people out there, and, 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 and I understand it's the race they've run, and they've shut down other information, and they've made judgment. You know, there, there's people out there. God's trying to bless a lot of people. He's already blessed. The scripture says everything that pertains to life and godliness has already been given to us. God wouldn't give you a purpose without providing the provision for the purpose. Right. Amen? Amen? God's not going to do that. He's going to provide you a vision and give you the provision to go with it. And there's people out there not doing nothing because they're against prosperity. I'm not talking about major wealth. I'm talking about having what you need so you can be generous. Do you know the word for righteousness in Hebrew is the same word for generosity? They're the same word. Well, what does American theology do with the word righteous? What, what's righteousness? See, righteousness in America is what you do or don't do. Because we make a what? Judgment. Well, that person's not righteous because they did that. We're making a judgment on what they did, and righteousness is not about righteousness is not moral or ethical behavior. Righteousness is right standing with the Father that produces moral and ethical behavior. But you have to renew your mind to your right standing with the Father. But the very essence of the word righteousness means generosity. They're interchangeable. In other words, if you claim to be righteous, you better be generous. You better have other people in your mind and in your heart other than yourself. I think Jesus was that way, wasn't he? I think so. Let's go ahead and read this. That we might know the things that, that have been... Well, see, the Holy Spirit has been given to us so that we might what? Know. That word know is actually means have experience with. That we actually just not hear about, but it actually becomes reality in our life. Have been free, have, things that have been freely given to us by God. God's given you things freely. Paul, The Apostle Paul says it this way. He says... I strive to take hold of everything that Christ has taken hold for, of for me. That was it. That's what he lived. He lived not to get out of situations. He lived. We're, 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 we're putting together a, a teaching on grace and grief right now. That See, the American theology is we use our faith to get out of grief. I'm sure glad Jesus didn't do that. He used his faith to go through grief. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross. I'm sure glad Paul didn't do that. Paul said it this way. It's better for me to go. But it's better for you that I stay. So he went through the grief. He went through the, 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 the whippings and the abuse and the 
persecution for others' sake. We're always trying to get out of the storm instead of asking God to empower us in the storm. Someone, someone needed to hear that. I don't know if it's in this room or on Facebook Live. Listen, you need to be praying right now for God to empower you in the storm, not to get you out of it. I tell you, with this, this COVID stuff that's going around right now, the Christians need to rise up and ask God to empower us in the midst of the storm. And may we shine in faith. May we have peace in our heart. May we spread, may we, God hasn't given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And Father, in the name of Jesus right now, we just ask that you empower us. Yes. Empower us in the storm to be a testimony of your goodness. How come we are always trying, we're always, Americans are always trying to get out of the situation instead of being a light in it. If we remove ourselves from the, the storm, who's there to be a light to the ones that need it? Anyway, well, that message is coming, so you may, not want, you may want to miss that week or two. Verse 13. These things... We also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Spirit teaches. What's the Holy Spirit do? Teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You can't compare, you can't make a discernment by using outside information. That's what it's saying. You have to keep your if, it's, if you're making a spiritual discernment, use spiritual information. If you're making a judgment, use earthly information. There's so many differences in the Old Covenant and New Covenant. We just, it's just a, I, I'm learning er, every week I think I learn something new about that's a difference between the Old Covenant and New Covenant. You know... Uh, I was sharing this with Joy earlier today. Does everybody know who the, the Peter is, the Apostle Peter? You know his name means stone. Which, what was written and engraved on stones? Law. The law. So a lot of times when you see Peter, James, and John, it's a reference to, and we've talked about that, talking about the mountain of, of transfer, transfer, I'll just say transfer. John means grace. Okay? Now, Peter... At the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper meal, right before Jesus was to be crucified, Peter declared, now remember, they're still under the Old Covenant. Peter declared his love for Jesus, didn't he? I'll do this for you, I'll do this for you, I, 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 I will do this, I will do this. I love you so much, I'll do this for you. Jesus said, there's going to be someone here to, who, who denies me. I don't know, not denies me, but you know they're going. They're they're going to be a traitor, and, and Peter says, "Not me. I love you. I'll fight for you. I'll die for you." And then before the night's out, who is denying him, cursing him, and rejecting him? Because Peter had was displaying the information of what he knew from his position. There's another person at the meal named John. And in the book of John, John's always referred to as the one that Jesus loved. Who was at the foot of Calvary? John. Peter or John? John? John was. Now wait a minute. Peter was declaring his love for Jesus. John had a revelation of Jesus' love for him. Did you get that? John had a revelation. Everywhere in John it says, oh, this is the disciple that Jesus loved. He never said, see, see, see the, power for us to, the power for us to live the life that God wants us to live is not us saying, well, we love God. It's for us to understand that he loves us. Jesus gave John 
the care of his mother. Because Jesus knew that John knew that Jesus loved him first. There's so many people out there saying, I love. They'll be the first ones to deny him. But what's going to get us through the persecution is knowing that he first loved. A revelation that he loves us. Notice Apostle Paul, he didn't go around teaching what everybody else taught. He manifested the love of God in people's life. That's what miracles are. That's what signs and wonders are. That's what healing is. That's what teaching is. That's what casting out demon is. That's loving somebody enough to get into their problem and make a difference. Finding somebody that's hungry, get into their life and make a difference. Finding somebody... i got to be careful how I say this. Finding somebody that can't get out of the hole and jumping in there with them. And helping them out. Verse 13. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches. But with the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man. See the outside circle over there? Uh, uh, I can't put that. Put, put the, I'll, I'll read it. They've already read it. But put the circles. Or the carnal mind of man. That, that's what it is. It's natural. It's over here. It's the carnal. The, the, the mind that's geared on touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. That's why there's people in denominations and churches that don't understand what other people understand that have the Spirit. Do you understand that? See, in the Old Covenant, they didn't have the Spirit. In the New Covenant, they have the Spirit. It was poured out in the Acts chapter 2. And the more Holy Spirit you activate or acknowledge and honor in your life, the more of the things of God you're going to experience. Does that make sense? The natural man can't receive the spiritual blessings from God because they don't have the spirit to bring the discernment to how to receive them. Verse 14 again. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolish. You ever hear that? I've heard that for years. Those people are just foolish. They're crazy. You know what's being said? You know what's, what is saying that? The natural man. The carnal minded. What? What? The natural man does not receive. That means he can't, he can't receive it unless he has the Spirit of God working in him. Once you have the Spirit of God, you can receive. But to the degree you acknowledge, remember we talked about the, the carnal, there, there's believers who have this. There's believers that have the Spirit of God in them. Okay, this is a great time to do this. If you haven't seen this, maybe we should have even started with that, but let, let's go over to, uh, I believe it's John chapter 4. Th this makes it so, for me, this makes it so plain and clear. Um, no, that's just... Just hold on, let me, let, okay, John chapter 7, John chapter 4, oh, one page off. All right, John chapter 4, starting with, um, 
You know, this is the story of the woman at the well. Do we need to read the whole thing or can I get right down to the meat? Get down to the meat. Uh, verse 11. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw uh, with, and the well is deep. Uh, where then do you get this living water? Jesus had just said, I've got living water, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank uh, from it himself, as, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him will become in him. Say in him. In him, in him a fountain or a well. The old King James says a well. Because this is what this is talking about in context. So when you believe in Jesus, there's a well that is placed on the inside of you, and that is the Spirit of God. That is for your own personal consumption. Do you understand that? You'll never thirst again. That is what God does for you when you get born from above. The Spirit of God is inside of you. There's a well inside of you, and you have access by joy. There's a scripture in Isaiah. We're not going to turn to there. It says, Joy is a dipper that reaches down into the well of salvation. How many people can drink from a dipper out of a well? Say one. So it's for personal consumption. Same teacher Jesus, three chapters later, turn to John chapter 7. On the last day of the day of the great feast, Jesus stood, verse 37, stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirst, uh-oh, we're thirsty again, aren't we? If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scripture says to believe, as the Scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Are we talking about the salvation experience? One place, Jesus says that there's a well that you'll never thirst from. Over here, he says, if you believe in me, as the scriptures say to believe, rivers of living water will flow out of your heart. Well, let's just keep reading. Verse 39, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in Him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus had not been glorified. This is talking about the second experience that you have as a believer. First, you have a well on the inside that's just for you. But if you want... See, didn't, in, in the book of Acts, didn't Jesus say that go and wait and you'll be endued with power to be my witnesses. You don't build a power plant. You don't have power from a well. You, a power plant is made on a what? River. A river where there's current and there's flow. And that is talking about this right here. Jesus, the same teacher, teaching in two different places. One about the personal, intimate well of salvation. And then when the Spirit, it says, these have not yet. It says it right here. Verse 7. Sorry, sorry. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing, they'd already believed, in him would receive, say would receive, would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, even to those that had believed. But the Holy Spirit had not yet been given. Well, who brings the Spirit to discernment? The Holy Spirit. There's a second experience. If you believe in Jesus, according to what the scriptures say, rivers of living water will come out of your heart. And I say out of your mouth. How can I say that? Because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth what? Speaks. Speaks. Man, this is so cool. So, it, but again, if you don't, you can be all fired up with the Holy Ghost one week and next year you'd be down in the dumps because you quit honoring the Holy Ghost. 
You understand? You still have it, but the dam, the, the river hadn't been flowing. Do you understand that? It's all based on honor. We have to learn to honor the Holy Spirit so we can have discernment so we don't live our Christian life just based on outside information, the wisdom of man, that we can have some revelation that's going to make a difference in our life. So we, it can be reality. It comes from the inside people, not the outside. We have so many people that are intellectually wise. The Bible calls that selfish and demonic because it doesn't come from above. Who did Jesus say the Pharisee's daddy was? That was my other example I was going to use. People knew the word, Pharisees knew the word, had jobs, had positions, were paid on staff, knew scripture, knew history, but they didn't have the spirit of God in them. They wanted to kill Jesus. That was their discernment. They'd made a judgment, not a discernment. They wanted to kill Jesus. And Jesus said to them, that group of people, your father's the devil. Woo, babe. I'm just saying. So I like, this is real simple for me to see it so plain and simple. Jesus saying that there's a well. And you, we all have a well. But then the scripture says, Jesus said, if you believe in me as the scripture says to believe, rivers of living water will come out of your heart when you're filled with the Spirit. So in answer to your question, it doesn't have to be permanent if our choice. If we choose to live in the Holy Spirit, we have Again, the scripture says the gifts and callings of God are, are without what's the word? repentance. Uh, he doesn't take them back. Well, I'm sorry. Repentance this is the word. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. He's given you a gift. He's not going to take it back. But if you don't honor that gift, you'll never use it. If we use it for a while and something happens and we get caught up in the junk of the world and we forget about it, we're not honoring it, we won't use it. Doesn't mean it can't be reactivated. In, 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 uh, in Timothy, uh, it says, stir up the gift that is in you. We have to stir it up. We have to honor it. We have to acknowledge it. We have to magnify God in our life. All right, let's go on. Uh, real quickly, let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Acts of Romans, 1 Corinthians. Let me know what's up there. Pursue love and desire what? Now remember, the reason he's writing this to the church in Corinth is so they're not ignorant. Ignorant people don't know this stuff. So the Apostle Paul is writing this to what? Pursue love. And in that, you're going to pursue spiritual gifts. And especially that you may what? Prophesy. What is prophesying? Have it an discernment of what God is saying about the future. You have to have it a discernment. Okay? No, no, don't go back to that. Pursue love. See, spiritual gifts, all the spiritual gifts. But the main thing is pursuing love because all these gifts are a manifestation of God's love. How do you pursue love? You can't have spiritual gifts without having love. You got it? You can't have prophecy. You can have prophecy, but it's not from God. God, God is motive right after chapter right after chapter thirteen the great, the, the love thing. Uh, let's let, for the sake of time. Let's go on real quick. First uh, Corinthians chapter twelve ten. Now let's no let's go back to four. We this is where we started. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. But there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. 
But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of for others. It's not given to that person for their benefit. It's Remember the Oral Roberts story I told you about? You know, why does Oral Roberts wear glasses? Reporter thought he had been a smart aleck. Oral said, so I can see better. <laughs> His healing gift wasn't for him. His healing gift was for others. Now, some people may be out there, oh, that was not real. Well, they're making a judgment from the outside, and they don't know what God's doing on the inside. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all, not the gain, but the profit. For to one is given the word of wisdom the Spirit uh, through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. So if you're dissing the Holy Ghost, dissing the Spirit, are you going to receive these things? If you're not honoring the Spirit, you're not going to get the word of knowledge. If you're not honoring, you're not going to get a word of wisdom. If you're not honoring, if you don't have a spirit of honor about you. See, if you have a spirit of honor about you, you can receive all these whenever someone else has need. People say, what's the greatest gift? The one that's needed at the time. And it has to operate through love. The greatest gift is one of the gifts that's needed at the time. Operating through love. To another, faith by the same Spirit. Faith in what? I use John's example. Faith that God loves me first. That when you leave here, I hope you go home and lay in bed and go. See, it's not braggadocious. It's not prideful. Say, was it prideful to John, for John to write in a book that we're still reading today that I'm the disciple that Jesus loved? Your children better know that you love them. And they better think that you love them the best, the one that's saying it. You know what I'm saying? That's how deep the love is. I know my mama loves me better than any of my brothers. Right, Mom? <laughs> right, right, Mom? <laughs> Record that, baby. <laughs> I know, it all depends on the gift I've given her. No, just kidding. <laughs> to another faith by the same Spirit, another gifts of healings in the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. See, if you diss the Holy Ghost, you're not going to have discernment even of evil spirits. You won't know when they're the deceptive spirit that you've been sitting under listening to for 30 years. I, I was in a ministry that for a while that our denomination, the pastor warned me that there were pastors in that in that that didn't even believe Jesus was a real person. But they were teaching the Bible to a group of people. What were they getting? Outside information. No revelation. So there's a difference between judgment. The Bible tells us to judge all things. The Spirit says to discern spiritual with spiritual. Don't judge a spiritual by something that you'd see it on the outside. You may, you may have never seen what's going on before. It doesn't mean it's not spiritual. But before you can be into judgment and spiritual, you have to be mature and have the Spirit of God inside of you as a river so you can have one of the gifts to discern those things. Some people have killed ministries because of outside judgments. Got a question. How does forgiveness work? Are we supposed to forgive? How does forgiveness work? Do you only forgive when you know someone stopped doing what they've done? It's an act of faith. Because of something that God's doing on the inside of you. Forgiveness is more about you than the person that needs it. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. You give us to be here tonight. 
Holy Spirit, you're the great teacher. We simply ask that you do what you do best. Cause us to meditate on the word tonight like we've never meditated before. Bring questions up so we can ask you the answers. Be our teacher. Do what you do best. Bring to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of yourself. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.